You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. Welcome to episode 45 of a Life in Ruins podcast. We investigate the careers of those living a life in ruins. I'm your host, Carlton Gover, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Connor Johnnan and David Ian Howe. Uh, this is just uh, just the boys segments that we're going to be doing once a month in our first attempt at doing a video segment of the podcast. So how are we doing uh, this afternoon, fellas? You know, doing all right. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic over here in West Colorado. I got to wear my uh, orange hat because otherwise I will get shot because that's <laughs> it's hunting season out here. And I, even though I'm in the middle of my own house, I have to be aware of this right now. So just wear your orange or your pink or whatever it is. Just do it. Your it's fluorescence. Western. You got to yeah. wear the fluorescence when you walk outside. Yeah, yeah. So oh, someone's like, going to think you're going to get shot. David has no costume because he has no imagination. He doesn't have a TikTok that's pretty popular or anything like that. So he's just got sponsored. You know, he's got sponsored. Yeah. We tell us about your sponsors. because that's a brand I like. <laughs> but this place called Coldest Water, which is just Hydro Flask with a coldest sticker slapped on top of it. Uh, but they sent it to me and it says. David Ian Howe on TikTok and how on TikTok. So, you know, uh, that's kind of cool. And I, you know, I could just make some Smith Town water out of it. So, so, uh, Carlton, what, uh, what crusade are you a part of and, or looking forward to that we're distracting you from at this point? So we were originally going to do, uh, David was going to screen share and he was going to play Donna man as, as we all talked about hunter gathering archaeology, the Neolithic and why it sucks and why we enjoy the Paleolithic the most. Hashtag. Oh, no, 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 awards. no, 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 that's not, how we, <laughs> that's not how we do this on the podcast. But then we decided not to go with that. And I didn't have a plan B. So here I am dressed up like a knight of Camelot <laughs> and uh, got nothing else. <clears throat> Well, you look good. You look good. You guys you. aren't wearing your masks. Like, what's wrong with you? I got the house to myself, finally. That's I, I live in West mask. Colorado, and masks are myth. So. I live in Georgia. My dog has COVID, so I got to, you know, I got to mask up. Apparently, there's, like, ranchers out in Oklahoma taking like cattle dewormer, because they think that's more better for getting rid of COVID <laughs> than, than the, than the uh, At the least vaccine. they acknowledge it, you know? Like, it, it's a... <clears throat> Uh, all right, you know this is itchy and it sucks. So you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm burnt. I'm burning up in this. this Dude, I mean, I like I, out. I got I got worms somewhere, but you know, kind of look out. There's a hunter behind you. <laughs> uh, so what are we gonna what are we gonna talk about today, guys? What are we, what's uh? So I think we should uh, not that I direct this podcast or anything like that. These guys just fucking yell at me all the time. It's just what it is. <laughs> we gotta stop the garrison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I said it's what it words. is, guys. <laughs> I said some words, but I think it's interesting to talk about how. We're uh, talking about that email. Oh, that email! Yeah. So we got we got an email. It was uh, critical. It might say hypercritical for what we do and what we are. So we're that's why we're wearing the costumes. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> we're, let's just be clear. We're obnoxious. We'll get, we get a little it. wild. And I yeah. tell a little crappy, rambunctious. Yeah, and I tell crappy jokes. It's just it's just what it is. It's what it is. What it is. It is what it we, is. We got a very pointed email that I hope David Ian Howe will read in one of the best voices that he has. And I'm gonna take off this yellow. And if I get shot, it's because I took off the yellow. Uh, did we determine if this this person is from overseas or are they from here? What accent? Do we so do? I'm pretty sure they live in Texas. All right, I'll just pretty go sure. Ahead. So we don't we don't you know disclaimer here. We get this email on January second. This is how we started 2021. He doesn't give us his name, but uh, I got a little I got a little heated and started backtracking his email address and, and backtracked him to Texas and found his name that way. But he's never he's never confirmed it. Dis- this disclaimer: is- We would never do that if you email <laughs> us. We would never track you down and tell you and figure out where you are. So it's just, it's just a. I'm a lawyer. That's how it goes. I'll tell these guys how to deal with it further. So, so what? It, what did the email say? I'm going to read it in the most posh, snooty accent ever because that's how we want it to sound. 
The subject line is just, why listen? Why? With a question mark. Then it goes into, with a, a link to the episode. This episode is one of the rare snippets of serious archaeology, with an E, not A-E. E. Interrupting what otherwise sounds like a sleepover for 14 year old girls, and oh, just 14 year olds, sorry, and all the silliness that goes along with it. I listen via the National Science Foundation's Science Zone radio. With that in mind, you might want to consider maintaining at least some appearance of professionalism around serious archaeology. As well, I have made my thoughts known to NFSF's Science Zone radio. What a schmuck, dude. That guy, like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle that. Like, I'm cool. We suck. Like, obviously, we do like some stupid stuff. Like, we do like the the sound effects. Carlton's wearing a, a get up right now, doing a weird, modulating Brooklyn, New York, Boston accent. And then Connor's wearing some hat thing. We do some thing. I go off on a bipolar tie road in some episode. Tie raid. Tie road. And I then road. 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 and then <laughs> I smoke rocks. Uh, but this he, this guy found just the one episode. We didn't even know we were on Science Zone Radio, and it yeah. was the episode where we were talking with our producers about having a good time, and like not even it, we specifically said this episode is not about like you know the Trojan War. We said it's about how the podcast gets produced. We're interviewing them, and we're having a good time with people that we know. Yeah, and it's a podcast. It's a conversation. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's it's the second episode from that. So, like, if you go back and look on our catalog, we have like the first episode with Chris Webster, which is just wild. Just it's just what it is. But like, that's <laughs> you know, I, I I realize that's a glimpse into like our podcast. But like, we are professionals. I'm not. Yeah, no, I, I disagree. <laughs> well, I mean, so we are professionals. We have, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have yeah. an RPA. I'm an RPA. I bought are, my professionalism. Yeah, we bought the professionalism to get to this point to basically say that we know something about archaeology. So, like, come on. And I you remember to that. You remember that argument we got in with that one person on Instagram years ago who was yelling at us about uh because David. <laughs> what did David say? Something about like, you know, those those are some there fringe ideas. Yeah, and, and she started yelling at us. And they were like, well, we don't have degrees. Like, this is what we do. And she was just like, oh, it's just sad. You spent all that money and you don't know anything. It's like, Wait, okay. Wait, that to me? To us. It was a long time ago. Oh. Yeah. We talked about it uh, with Damien, I think. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, was that when I said I had, there's some weird theories out there? Yeah. So it was like, they're not weird theories if they're mine. And I was like, <laughs> they're a little weird. <laughs> they're still weird because they're not backed up by any facts <laughs> but that's fine show um, me the data <laughs> oh okay so uh so we we figured out we got this how i feel about that yeah so <laughs> he drew joe biden looking beautiful over there but we also wanted that was to started a bernie sanders what do you <laughs> <laughs> I get confused. It's the, Dem it's the Democratic Party. Hey, 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 it is what it is. <laughs> it's what it is. So, so we we get this email. We uh, we try to parse through it and we try to figure it out. Like, where do we go from here? Basically, this guy just like told us that our lives don't exist. And and just to clarify, he didn't even send us the link to the specific episode he sent us the link to the entire feed so we had no idea what he was talking about oh, and so right, right. and so i sent him this really long email back that yeah, was it carlton, was no long is an understatement carlton sent him a tome that was like well here's actually what we do and our podcast is a bum, 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 and <laughs> can we call him martin luther at this point like even yeah, though he's wearing, wearing the crusades yeah even though he's wearing the crusades thing i think he was martin luther at this point <laughs> I gave him recommendations based on he's like, I want science. Like, well, you should go to these episodes. You probably listen to one of our Ruin Live segments. You know, like, you know, we're we're sorry you felt this way. And I sent him this whole thing. I'm like, happy new year. Steve, we wish you and your relations good and uh, good health and a safe year. And he responds back, the top episode. <laughs> like, 
completely ignores everything I said to him in the recommendations. He just answers the one question. I'm like, I'm not sure what episode you're listening to. Read not even the episode title. Not, it's like, not it's the like number. Three, the, it's the like four episode. paragraphs yeah. in. <laughs> so here's my assessment of it. And I was he, oh, at the end of it, he was like, I still see a life in ruins is in the National Science Foundation's blog, Aggregator Science Zone Radio. I may hear it or I may not. It depends on their rotation. Unsubscribe me from your email list and please maintain a level of professionalism worthy of archaeology, its discipline, and serious archaeologists everywhere. Its discipline and serious... That's, that's, that's not even a right sentence. He, he's not a serious archaeologist anywhere. So you spelled thing, archaeology wrong. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. My my whole thing is if someone is willing to go out of their way to email a podcast, like you have to go to their website, scroll all the way down to the bottom, find where it says contact us, go through that whole thing just to say you didn't like this one podcast. You got another thing coming because that's something like when you have time for that crazy anyway i'm cool with criticism like people call me out on ethno like every day now pretty bad uh but like yeah and we try to we try to respond as like as a podcast to like criticism because we're like we are basically 14 year old girls oh 100 yeah like giggle and and things like that and we but we but we also want boys too yeah doesn't have to just be girls we're trying to you know, communicate archaeology to the public and we're going to have some dad jokes and we're going to have some like antics and, and it's just what it is. And that's what it is, bro. Yeah. yeah David's like, not going to take his Klonopin and David's going to go on a <laughs> tirade sometimes. It's just going to happen. It's just what it is. <laughs> like we're, we're as a podcast, we are not going to like, we are fundamentally not going to change what we do because it's so it's fantastic. It's Connor, fantastic. Connor Biden coming out. Dude. <laughs> fundamentally. Fundamentally. So, fundamentally. Uh, so going forward, I heard we're going to have some uh, little s- snippets of this thing. So we're going to we're going to we're going to make some uh, sound bites going forward. Yeah, expect right. more. So expect a, a a life in ruins only soundboard, because that's that's how we know you hit the top. Yeah. So if you've been following us for a while, you're gonna, there's probably some stuff you've picked up on that are like cultures and little things, like our own cultures that we've made, and like our own things. Like everyone knows who Caleb Welch is at this point. Um, <laughs> Caleb you Welch, do you know who him. you are? Huh? <laughs> if you don't go follow him. Yeah, Caleb go follow Welch. Caleb Welch. You can give him some book recommendations. <laughs> David Biden's out. In that the, boy is about. thirsty for literature. Like he, he 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 loves it. He's a thirsty kid. He's a thirsty <laughs> kid for for books <laughs> for literature. Uh, but <laughs> I can't take this seriously. Dressed up in a Halloween costume. I need a drink. Yeah. I'll take it off for the second segment, but <laughs> um, so here's the thing, though. We got our own little mythos going on. Like we got we know about Dean. You guys hear you hear about Dean that one time, you know, Caleb Welch. Every time we say Wyoming, we're going to have to like bleep it out at this point. Just little things like that. So we'll add Jane those Goodall. to the soundboard. Jane Goodall, right. Jane Goodall. Yeah. So we're going to have to do like that, some chip that long, Yeah, on, on going joke. Yeah. So anytime Carlton hits the jewel, um, we're going to yep. have to bleep that out, too. So it's a the fuse thing now. Is, I, I moved away from the jewel. I've, I've changed brands. My loyalty is like shifted. Pepsi? Is that the Pepsi of jewels? Uh, you know, the bigger, bigger pods that are cheaper and it lasts oh, longer. Oh, it's yeah. Pepsi. It's straight up Pepsi. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, the new one, if we, because like, we're not supposed to be cursing. So anytime we curse or do something stupid, that's like, you know, considered to be a uh, sleepover with 13 year olds or 14 year olds or whatever. Like, cause he gave us 14 year olds. He gave us teenagers at least. You might notice that this episode is the first time we've done a video episode. Besides yeah. that one time that Connor and Carlton did the mad dog challenge. Um, we did that one with Donnie though. We did do a, a yeah, we did a live one with Donnie. Um, yeah, so Connor doesn't appear in it it in, in like you were Connor, Connor to go home. Yeah, we, we picked up yeah. Devin. So that's uh this is our first one. We'll pop this on our Instagram, we'll pop this on our YouTube. And if you're probably you're probably watching this on our Instagram, let us know what you think. If you want us to do more of this, we'll, yeah. we'll do that. Um mm-hmm. at the end of this, it's uh f- Frig Seth. What? That was that was a Scandinavian resident. I, I appreciate that. No, that was No Frig. But- Seth, I'm trying to follow, bro, but I'm not following. I'm lost. Hey, give, I'm lost give, in the woods. Give, no, no. Give give the guy. What's his name? Tell him to fuck off. Oh, <laughs> oh, the verb to frig. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Frig. Oh, frig that guy for telling us to 
to work 14 year old girls. So give well, it to them. Yeah, a, I mean, I'm cool with them giving us some criticism. We need to get knocked down a peg here we, and there. But like the fact gotta, that he emailed yeah, the you NSF. Gotta, you got to end it, though. You just give, yeah. him, give, him, give him, say, fuck that guy. Because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just saying, like, frig that guy. The best part, though, is like unsubscribing from your email list. Like, bro, you emailed <laughs> us. There's no email list. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you emailed us. Like, bro. <laughs> Classic federal archaeologist. Get him out of here. That's going to end this segment of our first video podcast, episode 45. 45, also the president's number that just left. So, see you in the next segment. Welcome back to episode 45 of Life in Ruins podcast. I'm here with David Biden and uh, Carlton Trump over here. What the f***, man? Why do I got to be Trump? And why, <laughs> I, you already got me. We're not supposed to be cussing. And right off the bat, comparing me to Trump. I got more hair than Trump. Can't you see this? This ain't fake. This isn't horse hair we got going on. This why is a real name. Why are you still in character as a New York person? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. because I'm, You I'm, live you guys- in Boulder. Be Boulder. <laughs> So on this episode, we want to talk I care, about. I, I take care of my hair with like natural organic soaps. There it is. Like I really love Better. the uh, sea salt foam. Uh, it's really good and hydrates my hair. I highly recommend it. Lush, if for those that are, are curious. Yeah, I live but, in Georgia, and I, I'm suspicious of Stacey Abrams. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that both nah, of you I'll guys you. are uh, balding at this point, and I have no balding in my part. So you guys are. You guys got long hair because you you guys are balding. It's, it's not just it's, I'm not balding. It, it, it's I'm just saying, it's I'm receding, just saying, Connor. Gonna, it's it's just, receding, not balding. No, I don't have a balding. spot in the back. i I it's just it's just slowly marching you, back like he's uh, balding. you know he like uh Okay, you know, so episode, Napoleon from Russia. <laughs> episode forty five, we're talking about we want to transition to talking about Donna Man, which is like honestly one of our favorite games that we played together. It's this super interesting build up between where you're like, okay, I, I, you know, I wake up as a hunter gatherer in pre Neolithic times. Wake me up. Yeah. Yeah. Wake me up inside. Yeah. Yeah. Pre Neolithic times. And how do you like kind of evolve from there? So what are your opinions on the game in general? Cause we played it together. Like give me the scoop. Besides Um, the receding hairline. It's like a, it's a real time strategy game. I guess we should say that. And like you said, (laughs) my receding airline, like you start in the stone age, like the paleolithic, then you advance to the mesolithic and then the neolithic. And then you go into the bronze age or copper age, bronze age, iron age. And like the, you, you have to get knowledge points throughout the game to advance through those ages. And it's, it's really cool, but it's like live real time and it's stressful because you have to constantly be foraging to constantly be farming you have to constantly be at the whim of your environment hunting rhinos and stuff um yeah and, and like the megafauna die and, yeah you know. yeah absolutely and they and they do like a seasonal thing where it's like <laughs> winter summer spring fall whatever the other thing is but like they they try to make you like provision for that and make you be aware of 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 how it goes yeah i hate this game so much I, I'm really disappointed by Donna, man. Like it, I got it, it like, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Like from like an archaeology, like from a gameplay perspective, it's like, uh, all right. Honestly, I'd rather play banished than play Donna, man. What's the one thing I, it's, it's something similar. Start. It's, it's similar gameplay mechanics. You start with a small group of people and you have to rebuild a town type of deal. But what mm. Donna Man lacks from like an anthropological perspective, right? It's that uh, you know when you I, I've what I've tried to do recently. Every time I play Donna Man, I'm trying to see what the maximum population size I can get staying the Neolithic, so I don't advance. And my entire purpose is trying to figure out how do I optimize this game towards human behavioral ecology, optimal foraging theory, and I try to play it like that. Yeah, but you're not allowed to move. Like you don't have semi-permanent towns. Like wherever you set up is where you set up. So you can't wander across the landscape, which isn't how Neolithic hunter and gatherers would have done it. So that's what I just kind of find kind of disappointing. That and they don't have any hot levels. areas. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't they like do seasonal levels. rounds. Yeah. So it's like, well, well, it's like, well, Carlton, you can just tell your people to go hunt something. It's like, yeah, but if I send like twelve of my people to go hunt a megafauna on the other opposite side of the map. Like cave lions come and just take my children off. Yeah. 
you know, hyenas but, will come through your camp and tear some stuff up. That's what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Bears will come through your camp and you get, but you gotta like, you gotta fight the, you gotta hunt stuff. And then you can, what the, what's neat though, is like when you, like Carlton's talking about with the behavioral ecology, like you gotta hunt stuff and you have to plan it, right? You can't run across the map because then you have to drag it all the way back and you got to account for water and like people, your people can be hungry. They need like shelter. Also winter could occur while they're out there while you're hunting. So you got to get back before winter. But then when you hunt them, you get the skins and then you get their bones and the meat. Then you got to bring that back and then you got to make drying racks for like the, the meat. And you also have to then collect wood to make the drying racks. Then you got to skin the, or tan the hides. And then to tan them, you need to get tannins from the trees and you got to get the kids out there collecting the tannins or like, you know, the non hunters. And then, yeah, it's a lot. And then you have to make dried skins, which then you use to build your shelters. And like, it's a lot of stuff in the beginning of the game. You only start with like eight people and it's like, go. And then you have to like, get the sticks for fire. You got to get stone, you got to get or flint stone. And then you got to get meat and you got to get wood and you got to get what's the other thing? Fish. And you got to just go. And it's, it's tough, but that's like, that's real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but it's also adhering to like this this idea in anthropology that you have to like there's stages of evolution that you go through, basically where you're like you're hunter gatherers, and then you're from there and and, and whatnot. But it's but, but but what we've studied in anthropology, it's way more complicated that than that. Like mm-hmm. you can, you can also regress in certain areas, at least in America. At parts of yeah. it that like that like oh i'm doing agriculture here oh this is not working at all so it's let's back down and, and do something like that so it's 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 very a stage thing you're working up to almost modern society at that point and yeah you're right because it, it does kind of do like that steward stewardish thing where it's like it, it, you progress through eras in like an evolutionary yeah. way which isn't necessarily right But it does in a way like the copper and the iron and the bronze and the tin or like, yeah, the the copper and the tin and the iron is all there from the beginning of the game. You have to figure out how to use it later on. And like you can unlock that through like knowledge points or the trader can bring that in and be like, hey, here's the secret of iron working, which is like in the old world. Like it was way easier to spread stuff around. And that's why everyone in the old world was like way further into the iron age than people in the americas because they just didn't have like such they had trade networks it's just like that kids in like jared diamond stuff but like it, it's easier when you can to learn how to do stuff when you can spread ideas a lot faster and it like goes around but like i guess my point is there's agriculture in the old world by like ten thousand bc and like it's trading around everywhere but in the americas people are still hunting and gathering until like you know the spanish get there in some places so well it's a it's, it's a very um, uh eurocentric game if you right think about it. yeah people yeah. are white yeah 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 and that's that's the thing is it doesn't take into account know, what's going on there's multi-races in the game i think no um, yeah i haven't i like i said since the past couple updates i still haven't gone past paleolithic because i'm still trying to figure out how many people i can keep and it's it seems to hover around like 35 and i can't break that so it even even the even the game itself. Oh, in the Paleolithic. In the Paleolithic. Yeah. So it doesn't even allow me to get past that. Even though I might have like optimized it to that point, and it's like I can't do anything else, which is kind of a bummer because it gets I'm able I've gotten to a point in that game where it's like, okay, I have I have a camp, but I have enough extra people that I can do long range hunting parties without like destroying the the camp itself from predators. But I'm still but I, I think that's cool. It's, it's, it's talking about they put like a population max on that stuff. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you like go to the next stage and everything like that. Like, I think it's interesting to like use it as Carlton's talking about where they you have so many camps and so many people like at one point. Do you like start domesticating things and going on to the next stage? You yeah. Know, what, what's the reality of that? Right. Yeah. I think it's like with the limit Carlton's talking about, it's coded like based off of like calculations with the carrying capacity of the environment too, which is, is neat. Uh, like the game obviously knows how much stuff is programmed into the landscape, but like humans don't know that immediately. They do once they go look for it, but yeah, it's neat. 
how like much thought went into the game. I wonder how many archaeologists they had. Like it's a small it. team, my understanding, out of like Europe. But like there is know, a cheese making update now. Yeah, oh, you, can yeah. Make cheese. You, can, you can make cheese. You can get cheddar. You know, I like a nice brie myself. I'm a brie. <laughs> oh, get out of oh. here. They they earlier there were two dog domestication updates. So you can get dogs yeah. and then you can get uh dog training and then the dogs can help you like hunt now and like yeah. also fight off hyenas and wolves, which is cool. I have seen that and I like that a lot that they do yeah. that. I don't know, like David was saying with you know the way that they project things and the way that things are taught that evolution is a ladder to success and we even in anthropology as as Dave was talking about Julian Stewart band tribes chieftain states it works but we don't but, uh, totally I'm, I'm going to give I'm going to give a asterisk there I don't think it was Stewart who talked about that before it's Morgan it's Tyler right Oh, I thought it was oh Tyler, that's it. Yeah, and yeah, Tyler yeah. and Morgan who are talking about like how Service, you evolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like service think, right service, yeah so yeah. like you you take those steps into being you know hunter gatherers which is savages and, and and stuff like that but it like like carlton's saying it's 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 way more complicated than that and then yeah there's no like you don't advance or like d whatever that word was Connor, that you used earlier digress de- digress like it's not you just don't get that like you see cycles in human culture you have you need that's that's what kind of you get and like even though in the americas you don't get like iron working the stone tool technology in the americas far surpasses anything in the old world you know it's yeah. like it's, it's wild if, if it if it's not broke don't fix it so why do they need these other things and a lot of technological advancement comes from usually mil- from military means right you know so it's like if you have you know that's why in the americas with those great earth mounds it's like well why don't they use stone it's like well when you live in a, a floodplain, you got a lot of earth you can move around why do you need to go the extra mile of bring stone in when you can make something just as high and much quicker you know well mm-hmm. yeah and then Res you have like, like you have copper in like the great northwest that like evolves and but it also doesn't spread because they don't have materials for that stuff but you assume as like a, a person who's looking at like different steps in how humans ad- uh, adopt things you would assume that they all have copper at this point and and things like that but like but it's 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 adapting to the environment but i actually like how donna man doesn't like i don't know it 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 it, it tells you what's available in the environment yeah you know, adapt past that you know, you're not always going to city states and then you're going to Civ 5 and then David's kicking our butts, you know, when we go to Civ 5 and he's in Rome. <laughs> no, bro, they, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to get rid of that embargo on you for the 12th time. No, it was just we next. Expand, time, we <laughs> if anyone has played Civilization 5, it's a wonderful, probably one of the best video games ever made. And you like you pick a, a world civilization like Egypt or Britain or the Americas and then you like basically just build a civilization and then conquer other ones or like through culture or science or domination. And I am not bad at it. That still Isn't goes it? in with that whole idea of that March of progression, right? Same, yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of the same thing. It's still fun. This uh, Sid Meier's games, still one of my favorite that and uh, age of empires does the same thing. Right. So they're in a lot of these like RTSs, real-time strategy games or even turn-based strategy games like there there's this march of progression it's hard for i mean i love rts's as like david and connor know i'll play real-time strategies all day you and crabe you're yeah, on there all the time it's yeah i just is. you know his name just popped up he's playing he's playing road total war 2 right now it just <laughs> yes, I it just <laughs> outside of crabe <laughs> it just doesn't yeah, it was crabe. on episode something at this point said i had crabs but like in general it's like fun to like progress through those ages like how many games have like the neolithic paleolithic in their games yeah in general yeah but it's like what does that communicate to non-anthropologists right because like we know what these forms of evolution from all the readings we've had to do and who talked about them and how we realize their strengths and weaknesses but like you talk to an undergraduate who's not an anthro major and you ask them like well what are the differences? And then a lot of times, like I've seen students say, well, you know, like North American Indians seem to be pretty, pretty goddamn dumb that they couldn't figure out to make copper, like pretty inferior. And it's like, I don't, 
that's not right. Like, you know, like that's just not, that's not what that is. It's someone not, said that know. on my TikTok, and I was like, you say something like that again, I have to block you. And then he just didn't respond. But like, yeah. Or he said like the Native Americans didn't have, or would be nowhere without like the European. And like, I think he just said it to be a troll. And I was just like, yeah, yep. not going to fly here, bro. Yeah. Uh, evolution isn't linear. That's just, I had, I had someone ask me about that the other day. I did a, uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a talk for the University of Regensburg in Regensburg, Germany as part of their uh, colloquium series. So they, and the German archaeologists, they don't know much about North American archaeology. So they invited me to talk about like what I do. And I, and I had a student, she asked, and it wasn't disrespectful. She's like, you know, what, if, if Europeans hadn't showed up, how do you think North American Indians would have evolved? And I was like, I, I, I can't give you like a factually based answer. Like that's so abstract, you know? And I kind of got into Jared Diamond things a little bit. I was like, you know, the things that Europe that got to Europeans to the, where they were in the 17th century, you know, wouldn't have happened without gunpowder from China or all these other inventions that happened across the globe in Africa, Europe, and Asia that are able to spread to one another. You know, you have those fusion adoptions and all that event going on. No, I think that's, I think that's a question because I, there's, there's that idea that, you know, Native American tribes in America, you know, weren't that advanced or, or, you know, are just like backwards people. But if you gave them the same time to kind of figure out things like I, they would, they would be a dominate dominating kind of presence here. Like, yeah. And like European farmers were like a European Mesolithic people in like 6,000 B like Utsi was literally goat herding, not doing like probably widespread agriculture until like Neolithic farmers from the middle East came and brought those technologies to them so like it's not like let came up with it on his own one day and he was like i have now advanced to the industrial era it's like no he someone brought that to him and i explained this to someone on tiktok the other day too it's like if you think about like is evolution linear or not it no like yeah it looks like animals should progress to an area where like where they're intelligent because that's how we perceive the world right and like apes and humans like look like they're going towards what we are but like we don't fly. Are we going to like, I would see like a Eagle or like a Hayabusa, like as like one of the like top evo- like evolved creatures on the planet. Cause it can fly so well and fly and like dip down and can see so far, but we're nowhere near that. So oh, no. like, are we going towards that direction? Absolutely not. It's like, it's a different sect of evolution. And like, yeah. do we have pouches for marsupial? No, it's like a whole different thing. So like it doesn't all go in one direction. It just like the whole world shares the same technology, really. And that's why it all looks like that. Yeah. Evolution is a process that we used to describe change. It's not a force, right? Like animals don't say, you know what? I need a, I want to get these, these leaves at the top. So I'm going to grow a long neck and get some, <laughs> get some patches on. I'm going to get these top leaves. I'm going to get yeah. these top leaves. What is it? What is, yeah. Who's the, who's the guy? Who's a. Uh, Guys, we got to stop cursing. <laughs> who's the guy who's like, uh, who believed that? It's oh, not, Le, uh, the the French Lamarck. dude, Le, Lamarck. Yeah, Lamarck, 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 yeah, yeah, Lamarck yeah. believed in that stuff that 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 like the the giraffes grow their necks longer, so they they do that stuff. But we don't remember, do it. Remember, remember, Lamarck wasn't remarkable. <laughs> and and that, note, we'll be right back. We'll uh, with segment three of episode forty-five of our first video podcast. Welcome back to episode forty-five of Life Ruins podcast. Also, our first video episode. We are going to talk now about what it would be like if. You know, European contact didn't happen uh, when it did, I guess, was the, the the thing. And if the Americas kind of progressed on their own to a point where they were at a an Iron Age, uh, you know, modern era type s- situation when they both met. Like if they were at the same level as the, um, like, yeah, I guess, the European powers as like, was that what, is that what it was, Connor? Is that what you were yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it'd be interesting to see like if, if the Americas had 2000 2000- more years like if it was gotcha 1794 where this inter- in, you know encounter happened because i think you know in general not assuming that they progress or anything like that but like i think they would have been they would have dealt with it better like is yeah. is is columbus is columbus as a person like uh 
like he 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 basically nailed it. Like otherwise, Americas would have been their own sieves by themselves. Well, I mean, like I think I think timing is important, right? When Columbus showed up, and then other um, non-Scandinavian European powers came over, right? Because one thing to consider is that Europeans for hundreds of years have always been around a cultural other that have different values to them and they know how to interact with that. And that's important, right? So if you think about the Spanish with the Moors, conflicting cultures and ideologies, they're used to that. Uh, Many indigenous populations in North and South America didn't have that. So the first time Spanish came over from a wildly different background with a wildly different set of beliefs, they were not culturally equipped to understand that. They just figured those people thought like them, which we see what happens with like Montezuma and conquistadors because they thought the Spanish would follow the same cultural protocols. And they didn't. And that was one of part of their downfalls, right? Is that this awareness of that other people think differently than your set of beliefs, you know, this, this. They almost worshiped them as gods when they encountered them. Yeah, there, there was something going on with that. But like, you know, the Spanish almost lost a couple times because they almost got totally wiped out. But then the Aztecs started take, trying to take captives rather than annihilate them. You know, so there's tactical errors. And like, could you imagine like when the Spanish yeah. started going into like the plains in the southeast, in the 14, 15, and 1600s, particularly the 17th and 16th centuries, the North America is going through a period of cultural recovery. So like the chiefdom civilizations like Cahokia and others had, had collapsed. And so these groups are, are re going through a new period of ethnogenesis and re-identifying who they are. But like, could you imagine if the if Europeans showed up at like the height of Cahokia or the height of some of these other mountain cultures who had huge militaries and territories that span from Louisiana to the Great Lakes? So it's just a fortuitous period. So it might not even necessarily be like, well, they didn't have horses. They didn't have iron. But if those, you know, ratty Spanish conquistadors, right? Like the first people that came to the Americas from Europe were not good people. Like Cortez went to prison back in Spain after what he did. Like he was, what he did, it wasn't, they didn't glorify him. Like that man went to trial because they're like, you're supposed to be a good Catholic boy. And what you did was not very Catholic. You know, he- Columbus? uh, No, Cortez. Oh yeah, Cortez got put right on notice too. Like they didn't- Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's like, there's these cultural differences that people I don't think are necessarily aware of. Like the Vikings tried to come here several times and they couldn't do it like at all. They got some of those Viking settlements in Canada are, there's a lot of violence. Yeah. And it's, it's sad. And even like early English settlers here had a a really hard time, even so much that we can't even find them in the archaeology record. Yeah. Right. But it's also we got to consider the fact that those people came over. They're businessmen. They came over to like, especially in Jamestown and the Vikings, like Viking was a, it's, a, it's not a race. It's a trade. Viking is a trade. You don't mm-hmm. have Viking ancestry. You're yeah. Stop. Uh, what is this? You have, yeah. It's um, it is what it is. You People from Viking culture and and like like European business culture came over here and Jamestown was like people that wanted to form a colony that were business people wanting to make profit, looking for gold and creating industry. But they didn't know how to farm in like some of them did like they weren't they had you had to have money to come over here. And then they also like when stuff went south and they didn't have, you know, it didn't go the way they wanted to. And the natives had to help, you know, give them corn and stuff to help them survive the winter. They didn't know how to farm the area. They didn't. There wasn't like abundant like wheat fields for them to just like use. So that's why they started to eat each other and boil their belts and stuff to like eat. Like it, it didn't work. Same with the Vikings. Like they came here, and like there's not huge like fisheries and there's not huge like cow pastures to like eat. There's bison, but not way up there. So they just like made some hobbit holes and were like, nah <laughs> and left. <laughs> like it's not gonna, like. Yeah, and then they don't have a GPS to get right back. I mean, they're good navigators. And on top of that, right, you look at the early treaties, and it's all European settlers like begging for help and peace with the local tribes because they cannot survive without them. But then once the colonies become more established and they want, as David said, like to expand their business to get access to different resources, it's not like they just showed up at their doorstep, asked them to leave. They would ally with a different tribe who didn't like the tribe they were already at peace with. And every instance of American history of Americans or other Europeans in the Americas to expand 
they're using other Indians to help them. So the entire colonial history of uh, North and South America is not like Europeans, uh, like John Smithing on their own. They're they're have they're using other Indians, and every from the Civil War, Revolutionary War, French and Indian War, to even the Indian Wars in the Plains, right? Like the U.S. Cavalry was not doing very well at all against Lakota, Cheyenne, and uh, Arapaho <laughs> Colonel, warriors. Colonel Custer. Yeah. And so they're like, well, who who's good at killing those people? They're like, I know. Why don't we recruit 600 Pawnees and put them in blue uniforms? And and that and that's how the Indian Wars were won. It's like, oh. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's um, where I get my last name from is a cavalry scout. Uh, but it's like, it's was, interesting. Uh, like, if you think, like, if they were given, like, 2,000 more years to – you know, interact and whatnot, but there, I feel like there would be a dominant population where there wouldn't be an influence from Europeans where they could play off that stuff. And uh, playing off what Carlton said, and, and to answer that question too, like the Aztecs were like, not the, like, it's hard to compare the, like the, the Maya being the Greeks and the Aztecs, the Romans of the world, like, right. The Iroquois are also called the Romans of the, the new world, but it's, I wouldn't necessarily call them, but think of in that realm, the Aztecs pissed everyone off, like everyone that spoke Nahuatl in their area and like the Mesoamerican tribes pissed them off. And that's why when Cortez got there and La Marinche, uh, Malinche, Marinche, I can't remember, um, helped uh, like, you know, as a translator, get all the other tribes to help unite against the Aztecs to help fight them, as you said, Carlton, getting the other indigenous the Tla- tribes. The Tlaj Collins. The yeah. Tlaj Collins, which are right next door to Teotihuacan. Yeah. yeah. Like this, they, they're like new guys on the block that want to get rid of court, uh, Montezuma too. Like, so even the, the Spanish had help from the indigenous. And like right. as David said, the Aztec, they'd only been around for like 70 years. Like they're pretty new and they're very expansionist, but like people did not respect that there i mean so when cortez showed up and was making moves there was it was more civil strife within the aztec empire rather than outside influence but that outside influence capitalized you know so Which but that's not so taught yeah is very similar to what goes on overseas in europe and asia just like every other civilization so to answer Connor's question, I think, yeah, like whether the Aztecs, maybe they would have fallen like the Maya did, the expanding too much, but they weren't like cutting down jungles and stuff. They were straight up terraforming, like kind of like the Europeans did. And when Cortez got there, I don't think it was Cortez, but it was one of the conquistadors in that that mission said like he, they pissed themselves when they saw Tenochtitlan because they said it was like bigger than Constantinople and like something they'd never seen before and were like, yeah. whoa. And but like, I feel like they built they a be, city in the middle uh, of a lake. A, a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. The, and the Chinampas, Chinampas are cool. Like, yeah, I, if people don't know, in order to like make that area profitable, they built these like wooden. They made their own canal systems. They built large wooden rectangles filled and just like scraped lake mud, which is high in nutrients, put it in there and grew on top of it. And then they also created little ecosystems for fish. Right. So their, far, even their f- method of farming was nothing like we've seen anywhere else. Mm-mm. And so they had like division of labor with like, they had poets and they had writers and they had like literal obsidian smiths and they had like, like markets where you could buy like stuff from all over and zookeepers and th- like, it was a huge city that was quite literally a Neolithic city. <laughs> um, yeah. But, the, but I feel yeah. like if you, if you, if you gave them like 500 more plus years, yeah, they would, they would have conquered that stuff and they would have been on like a united front to say, you know, when Pizarro or Cortez came that like, this is, this is BS. You know, like they're there and could have fought them off. Yeah. 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 And possibly it's, it's, figuring it, out like another advanced or like more yeah. complex technology. Like and I, love that. Working. I yeah. love that. I think that's super interesting to think about how how folks could have, you know, if you gave them 200, 500 plus years. Yeah. But like they were getting there. Even, yeah. even if you look at like the political aspect between Europe and North and South America, like the, the European monarchies were so solidified that, you know, everyone was related to each other. Right. That you, no matter what country you went to, you had a monarch, they were ordained by God. Like you were set in that belief system. But in the Americas, you could still walk with your feet. You could vote with your feet. Sorry. Of course, you could walk with your feet. We do that all the time. But you could vote with your feet, meaning like if you didn't like how someone was running things, you could just walk away. 
Yeah. Like there wasn't that ingrained socio-political. Could you though in those Mesoamerican places where you had maybe not kings mezzo. and stuff? And maybe slaves. not mezzo. But, but in, even in North America, one hundred percent, you could you could yeah. literally like leave from uh, the bound the mound builder yeah. culture in the South and go North, and that would be fine. Like that's that's just like it's cool to see that because North America is like this beautiful untapped kind of experiment in, in, in human socio political technology. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that's what it is. I mean, like, so we've been and only the, as well, like terraforming, like all that stuff to just farm some potatoes. They were about to have their own McDonald's over there at some point. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And like have French fries all up in this and have like with those giant, what are the, the terrace farms? And they had lot. Yeah. That's the other thing. And Jared Diamond points this out, which I think is a valid thing, but he's not the only one who points it out. They don't have the beasts of burden that we do over. And they, yeah. they had dogs, they had llamas, and then turkeys and guinea pigs. But like, you can't have a guinea pig tow a cart. So, and llamas aren't good at it either. And they're good for wool, and they can carry like a bag, like a satchel. Like yeah, kind of it's like, like more pen. than twenty five pounds. They're just like, nah, fam, it's a little yeah. too heavy for me. So, like, oh. without that, they couldn't really do all that stuff that you can have like a like an ox or a horse pull. But like with a little more time in what the Inca were doing up there before Francisco Pizarro came there and like took them out. And he like strangled Atahualpa um, because he wouldn't give them gold. And he was like, or, cause I think they had gold, but they, they ran out of gold. gold. Yeah. And they then he's like, Oh, no more. Cause you're going to die. And like, <laughs> like but they also had like steel plates to protect them from that stuff. So it was like, it was like, Oh my the God. The Spanish what? or the, the Inca? Spanish. So they had like oh, right, steel right. plates to like protect themselves from. But not all of them. Even like with Cortez, the only one wearing actual armor was Cortez. Like yeah, all the other I've, conquistadors did not show up with armor. I've done like CRM they- <laughs> in the Southeast and like Devaca and DeSoto, they weren't wearing plate mail through the South. They took that stuff off at the beach and ditched also, it. Also, <laughs> if you haven't read about that as an archaeologist, read up on DeSoto and all those folks up there because it's, it's absolutely wild to see like like your actual interactions you know like they're like spanish people like delving into like the actual um, well it's like even the whole lost city of gold thing is just hilarious like as david said you know those native americans as one of people some people that commented you know saying how stupid natives are it's like a group of spanish just rolled in looking for a city of gold and you don't know what the hell you're they're talking about and like, oh, you're talking about the next town over. They yeah. have all the gold. So they sent the Spanish on a wild goose chase to go look for non-existent gold. And every town and village was just like passing the buck to the next one. <laughs> and, and it was, was just. Uh, it was DeSoto would like feed them to dogs, like his big mastiffs. And then yeah. he, like, then he, I think he got to like Nebraska or Arkansas somewhere out there. Yeah. And then he finally got there and he was like, I'm out. <laughs> and he like went back because he's like nothing there. And even like Villaser, who came out from the uh, colony out of Santa Fe, you know, he brought a couple hundred conquistadors and a bunch of Pueblo auxiliaries out to the plains to go make the plains part of the Spanish Empire. And they run into a bunch of Pawnees and Wichita's who kill everybody. And then Spanish like, yeah, we're not going out there again and kept the Spanish in the southwest. And there's instances all across North America where there's a lot of failures on Europeans. You know, yeah. there, but there's these moments in time that are usually come down to treaties being broken, not open conflict hmm. between groups. You know, like you have but, you have some of those. Well, it's interesting to me to like think about how the folks who are in, you know, just south of me looking at all the ruins down south of me in Cortez. What is the, the band? Oh, there? The, the Comanches. The, there, there's you. There's southern Utes down there. You got your Pueblos. Navajos. Yeah, they're, they're, they're basically like the north expression of the Pueblo folks, but they they literally re- regressed into a, a point where they're like, OK, we can't do this farming thing. So we'll do this like movement plus horticulture thing because we have to figure this out because it's not working. Yeah, it's not necessarily re- regressing. Right. It's it's adapting. To yeah. The environment. Adapting. Like they left know. the the grind for that van life. Yeah. That that RV I mean, life. that's what like the Lakotas did. They were farmers up in the Great Lakes. And once they got horses, they were like, YOLO. Why? Yeah, like we're out like peace. Yeet. And they just left and went to go be nomadic bison hunters because that they're like, once you have the horses, you could you could do that. Is there physical anthropological evidence of their teeth and like health getting better? 
after that. Like from like being like a super starch ridden diet and then going back to like a, a protein rich diet. We'd have to ask. We'd have to ask think, Eric. It's or Emily. Like, it's, I'd ask. I think. Well, yeah, I'd ask Emily. She would know. Yeah. Because then we could throw that right at Stefan. Yeah. Win yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> no, but like it's it, it's interesting to think. I I think coming to finish this episode is that the cultures in North America could have dealt like if Columbus came up here 2000 years later in 1754, like, I don't, I don't think Columbus settles here. Yeah. I don't know. We just did based on what we know, the 16th and 17th, the 16th century, right. Where all this stuff it's yeah. If you gave even the North American civilizations and, and, you know, above the Mexican basin, like just 200 years or 100 years for them to, after the, the fall of those Mississippian states where they're reforming their identities, it would have been interesting to see how they would have, what they would have done. Because yeah. yeah. you already started to see the vestiges of the Iroquois becoming more powerful. The Cherokee are getting, are forming, and these other groups are starting to coalesce. And yeah, if you would have given them like 100 more years, the cultural landscape would have been much different. So it was just a fortuitous time that the Europeans arrived when they did because they were in a, it was like, that was the best time to do it. Yeah, and yeah. on that note, we're going to end episode 45 yeah, this has been episode 45 of the Life and Ruins podcast. No guest day, just bro talk, talking about how we, how we respond to emails and uh, discussions about gaming and archaeology. And then uh, got into a wild goose chase, a wild turkey chase about uh, Please European. Please give us a review on oh, iTunes yeah. and Spotify. We need, we need more reviews. We need you guys to, to tell us what you feel. And, and please feel, send us emails. <laughs> they can be horrific in emails like the one we got earlier. Just yeah, give them to us. Yeah, yeah, we want it. We want to hear you guys what you guys think and what we can be doing better, or who what you who do you like to hear? So yeah. uh, uh, we're not humi- humiliate those folks on live air. This one we've just been we've been percolating on this one for a while because it was just it was wild. So all right, with that we are out. Thanks for listening to a Life in Ruins podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at a Life in Ruins podcast. And you can also email us at a Life in Ruins podcast at gmail.com. And remember, make sure to bring your archaeologists in from the cold and feed them beer. This is from my father, Dean Jonan. Dean? So I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. I hate you. Wait. It's, he ordered a chicken and egg uh, from Amazon. Which one's going to come first? Yeah. They're going in the Good same one. box. <laughs> Only if I choose that option. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Connor. All right. This episode was produced by Chris Webster from his RV Traveling America, Tristan Boyle in Scotland, and the Archaeology Podcast Network, and was edited by Chris Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com.